what's missing curfew. It's when you kind of play guilty, but you show up. How nice is a green light on the road, though? No practice tomorrow, no playing, just go. Scotty Upshaw in the clear, and he scores! In front, scores! A few laughs, a little bit of fun, and obviously a lot of hockey talk. You're listening to Missing Curfew. Foul, lads. Foul, uh, my man, welcome back. How we feel, bud? Well, it depends. I'm, talking I'm, what? I'm a little shaky. Whoa. I'm a little shaky. I don't feel like this normally on Tuesdays, but then again, I uh, did. I had a three day weekend. Yeah. So yeah, me too. I did think at one point in Vegas. Well, there was a couple points in Vegas. I was like, "Fuck, where are my boys?" But at one point at the F1, I'm like, "Why is Up Dog not here?" I mean, the, you, you got you got to get there next year, brother. I uh, listen. I, I tuned in from from Instagram. All right, and it was uh, it, it looked like quite the festivities. Well, what what stands out as the biggest highlight of the first ever F one in Vegas? For, for well, you had a, you had yeah, awesome listen, pack. We week. we got lucky. We we were we were going there for a shout out to Bill Burr, um, dude. I mean, he was tired after his set. He played for like an hour and a half. Uh, when you walk in there, you have to you have to lock your phone away, right? Which is obviously to protect himself. Um, I mean, he did this one skit. If he was president, how he would legalize massages he talks about how like a normal girl gives the best massage but can't jerk you off and then he talks about how the girls that jerk you off are the best to jerk you off but can't rub you down so he's like if i was president um you know that'd be the first thing i would do i would i would legalize any massage to do whatever they- i i was in the third row just absolutely dying uh he did a bit on joe biden he's like if this guy was sitting at a at a diner you know by himself yeah he was all confused you'd almost feel bad for him but because he's president, you're like, nah, fuck you, buddy. You're fucking ruin the country. <laughs> it, it was just great. Uh, I was lucky enough to meet him after. He, he was tired. You could tell that he was wrapping up his concert. Uh, me and Billy got a sick pick with him. I uh, didn't really want to bug him. Talked about Sean Thornton a bit with him. Um, yeah, he's a good dude. But the F1, I mean, we we got lucky. Uh, shout out to Billy Quinn's buddy, Aldi. Had a set up at our old, remember the old Cosmopolitan? Love Aldi, buddy? by the way. Aldi's a great guy. Great guy. Um, so the Cosmopolitan for the people out in Vegas, when it first was built, was supposed to be condos. Fell through, so they have patios. I mean, Updog, if you could get, if you could get a, they, and they have them because I used to get them for my year in Bender. They have these wraparound suites at the Cosmo. Mm-hmm. If you got that suite for F1, you could throw the sickest F1 party for yourself where you like, you have it playing on the TV, you can have a DJ because you could see the, the straightaway unbelievably. Really? It was it was sick because we had no tickets. We went in there just kamikaze style. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Which is fine. Yeah, it was fine. Which is totally fine. Now, what was like so you were able to see the race from those from the suite? Dude, yeah. What did it like the oh, lights man, and the way the fireworks after you see the fireworks? Fi- I saw the videos. It was crazy. I it was the loudest fireworks I've ever heard in my life. Oh. And they just continued to go on. It was nonstop. I mean so the first night we walk, we're walking over to see Bill Burr and they're doing the qualifying time trials. And where we're walking is a straightaway. And these cars are, whoa, 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 whoa. Like it is insane how loud they are. And you could, I could see how these girls like these guys. Oh, yeah. Right? Like the, the vibrations and the <laughs> sounds. And I mean, yeah, they're for sure. Like these girls are speed fired up. Yeah. I'd fired up. Uh, you, you actually said, we did a curfew calls, I think last year, the off season. And I asked if you could be anything else, what would you be? And you said an F1 driver. Guys are making 75 million. Uh, Driving cars. Yeah. It's more about like, cause listen, like it's, if you've watched the Netflix series, like the Red Bull car right now is so much better than the rest of them. The guys won like seven straight races, max, whatever his name is. They're stapping. For stapping. But it's more about the lifestyle and, and the event. And like, it, it's, it, it's really was a spectacle. Yeah. Next year, I'm going to go. I'm going to get a little more dialed in. Um, shout out to Todd Pickup and Tom Riley. T- Pick gave me a ride home. Thank God. It's, I'd still be stuck in Vegas probably. Getting out of there was not perfect. But those boys, Tom Riley, what a what a, what an OG. He had the sickest setup there, man. He had the yeah. sickest. He was right right on the, the stretch right there. MGM Bellagio, boom. It's sick. So so would you say overall success like Vegas for the first year? You know what it's like. You throw a music festival or you throw yeah. a massive big party the first year. It's a little bit of a shit show. You know, like you think this is something, um, you know, year one to year two, they might even be able to do things bigger, more efficient. You know, was it a little bit of chaos, I guess is what I was saying. Not as, chaotic, not as, chaotic, as, not as chaotic, yeah. is that the word? Chaotic? Chaotic. Chaotic, chaotic as I thought. Yeah. Um. So they signed a 10-year deal. So the only way they were going to do it is if they gave them 10 years to 
I guess, to, to keep coming back. So they did a great job of, if you were in an Uber or whatever, they, they tucked you in behind, like they, they did a good job of, and then when the race is not and Las Vegas, Las Vegas Bowl is open and then they close it for the time trials and close it for the practice round and close it for the race. So honestly, Uppy, it was way better than I thought it was going to be. So I, I can only imagine again, it looks so good on, I mean, I, it looked good on TV, but when you're standing at the Cosmo where I was like, and you could see the sparks coming off because it's at night and it's pew, 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 pew. Sweet. And there was tons of Max, are you an F1 guy? They call them overtakes or whatever. Uh, yeah. Yeah. When they lots of overtakes, I guess, which means a guy right, passing like a guy right at the end on the last lap passed mm -hmm. Ferrari passed. Yeah. And the Aussie's kid, uh, I believe his name was Trevor Travis. Trevor, he knew everything about F1. This guy knew it inside and out. He's like, what? Well, he, it was like, we just saw a guy seeing a Stanley Cup winning goal. He was like, oh my God, that was the sickest thing I've ever seen. I was like, really? He's like, you never see that. So it, it was cool. And awesome. Um, I mean, if you wanted to go there and dust off your Amex and do it right, I mean, you could have a time. You're 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 way too cheap. I'm all about saving money. Yeah, there's no way you trying to anyway. Actually, I said to somebody, I think I was texting with Travis. He was there, and we were talking about like maybe going to Delilah one night. And I was like, Yeah, he threw out how much it might be. And I'm like, I wish Upshaw was here to hear how much that was. He's like, No fucking way are we doing that? No chance. No what chance. Over tables twenty. I uh, they were they were floating around. Fifteen. 15 they were close. Ten, yeah, twenty. They're crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. I heard you did good on the tables. You want to share that? I did listener? do well on tables. Uh, you I? have to tell when you win. I mean, it's, yeah, it's great. I never usually win. Actually, I I never win. I didn't even really know how to like give back my money I owed for the marker. I'm like, so how do I do this? I've never had to do this before. But Tom Riley sat down and played with him on the Friday night. Um, he's a great team guy. He was helping yeah, out. He's good. Yeah. Yeah. So at one point, oh, I'll tell you, at one point on Saturday night, I had uh, I was up thirty thousand dollars. Right. That's good. That's, that's good. a good. That's a good day. Yeah. Well, wait. And now this is like right to the time where we're getting ready to leave for the race to go over to Cosmo and watch it. I'm like, I could just pay back the 10, take the 30, see you later. I'm like, fuck, I'm taking these boys down. I go $5,000 hand. I go, here we go, $5,000 hand. Boom, six, five. Got to double it. Yeah. Got to double Have it. To. Face down, face down. Eh, eh. Dealer gets like 20. I'm like, oh, I just did one. Flips over. I had like a six or something. Boom, 10 G's gone. Sit there. I don't even think I play it. I just kind of wait. I'm like, Billy, go ahead, play. Uh, all right. Boom. Another $5,000. 11 again. Boom. Double down. Boom. See you later. So within the matter of, I'm going to say it was no more than five minutes. I lost. I gave back 20 grand. So I checked out. I, I left up 15. Yeah. So it was that's good. a good, that's a great day. Good day. For I, I got the photo from you. I knew you were in a good spot. Yeah. You're, I knew you were having fun. I probably... Could have guessed where you were off to after that. Yeah. And uh, I was jealous I wasn't with you. So, you know, congrats to, yeah. uh, congrats to you. It seems like well, a successful week. You know, speaking of it, you know, I got to talk about our boy, Matt Gell here, if I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> Please do. So, Matt Gell, I love you, bro. I love you. And we've talked about this for a couple months of him coming into Bill Burr. So, you know, Matt Gell's a wild card, right? He's a wild card. Yeah, we can so say I, it. I love we him. He's a wild card. And, uh, you know, I'm touching base with him all week saying, hey, when's your flight get in, this and that. And then he hits me up a couple of days before. He said, listen, I'm flying in with the Tau group, jumping on their bird right out of, right out of Teterboro or whatever, right? Is that what it's called? Yep. So, all right. Okay, perfect. All right. So I'm texting him and updating. He's like, oh, we haven't left yet. We still haven't left. I'm like, what? You haven't left? I'm like, well, now you're going to miss Bill Burr. And that's why we were going in because we both love Bill Burr. So finally I called him and I said, oh, you know, this and that. And I go, you're not coming. But he missed the bird or? Well, they bumped him off the first bird, I guess. Ah, they bumped him off the, the first bird. But I'm wondering, I'm starting to wonder if he was ever really coming because they had the Sean Kane friends, Friendsgiving, right? Because he had to be back Sunday, he said. So I, Mac Allen, love got him, a lot on his plate. But I don't know if you were ever coming. Yeah. Well, he pulled it to me and he pulled that off to me in loops in, in Europe. I mean, he planned the whole trip. Yeah. He planned where we're flying into, the hotels we we're going to stay at, he planned basically the restaurants, the car service. And then, uh, then he just said, I'm not going. We're like, what? Yeah. Yeah. We love you. We need you. Why aren't you coming? Yeah, I could have used He just said, ah, it's busy. Could have used So could have, you know, I'm, I'm sure Matt Gill had a, a pretty nice uh, weekend in New York City. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it didn't ruin his buzz. So yeah. I'm sure. So I ended up uh, well, a little bit about Uppy's World. Hold on. We're going to get there. You're jumping all, right. all over the place. Sorry, on me. That's all right here. Let's go NFL fantasy football before we jump into. Oh. Uh, uh, congrats on your win. Thank you. I kicked Great Flowers way. ass. Yeah. That's and I told him, this is a statement. I'm battling for my life, <laughs> and you're sitting up front the bumper tees, and, I, and I'm coming. 
Yeah. And I said, this is going to be a little rude awakening for you this weekend. Yeah. And, and I smashed him. Maybe this is because I've missed the playoffs the first two years. I've never won. But like Flowers was talking about like how he was, you know, eight and one. And like he was the man, right? Yeah. And you were like talking how you're going to miss the playoffs and how you're like crushed. Like, it's a crap shoot, man. <laughs> it's fantasy. The fact that we're playing for this much money, like I, I, I bet a, I do a lot of stupid things, but yeah. the amount that we're playing for the amount we are, like, I'm playing Loops this week. He beat me. Congrats, Loops. But he gets Trevor Lawrence as starting quarterback. They're playing in Jacksonville. It's 75, sunny, and perfect. I turn on the Monday Nighter. I got Patty Mahomes playing in a fucking monsoon in Kansas City. It's just like, a lot of luck goes into this, bro. I'm making yeah. excuses, but a lot of luck goes into you, this. So you had Kyler Murray or... No, I had Patrick Mahomes. But do you still have Kyler Murray? Yeah, my, Kyler Murray got 22 points. For so me. Yeah, so it's almost... You got to like really look at the weather, the forecasts, and everything. It's crazy. You're checking out... Max, no, you think he's checking the forecast out? Not the forecast, but I look and see where the quarterback's playing, right? Like yeah. in December and January. Okay. okay? We're well, starting to get to that time of year. If you have a guy playing in Denver... Fucking, you might as well go. High, you might as well go get the the backup playing for the Indianapolis Colts, because you know, good luck passing uh, the ball in snow. And and odds are it's gonna snow if if it's in Buffalo, you know, Buffalo and your boy in like, your boy slinged it against the Jets. He, yeah, he did. Yeah, twenty five points. Um, speaking of the Broncos, fuck, the Sean Payton's got him going here. He does. What a win! I had, I was on the right side of that. Did you um, money line him? Because they lined up. Okay, good. Because I went the other way. I took the points for the Vikings. Yeah, I money lined him. Um, all right, so let's go up to date standings here because everyone, as you guys know, the updogs worry about making the playoffs here. Um, a lot of guys at six and five. Me as well. Up dog. You're five and six, you're in seven. No, place. it hasn't updated yet. No, yeah, yeah. I was huh? six and four. Yeah, oh, it's you updated. Were? Yeah. You're yeah. five and six, buddy. You're okay. seventh place. <laughs> <laughs> You're in seventh place. I'm back. I thought I was getting to 500. Eh? I just looked and no, uh, it's still five and six. Yeah, That's no, that you were four and six heading in. You're you're right there now, buddy. I mean, where, where you at? You were, you're up there. I'm in fourth place. So you got. Five. See, this is what I hate too. Is you got 12, 1,256 I, points. I got thirteen hundred and forty points. I know, but I got a better record. I know. See, that's just it's tough. It's a tough way to go. I like having more points. How many yeah. more weeks of the regular season you guys got left? I think you got three. You got to go by wins and losses. You got three more weeks. You can't go by points. You got to go by wins. That's yeah, five it's nice to just you know that your team is loading up, huh? And do they only count points for the players that are in the lineup? That is true, right? Correct. That is yeah. correct. So my guys, I mean, I've just had just tougher opponents than Obes, I guess. Well, it's all luck. It goes back into my luck thing. Oh, it's completely luck. luck. I mean, depending on who I play that week, if I beat them, because they, they obviously, I, I you. It depends. You could have a good week, yeah. and the guy just was better. It's like it's I, I got as much points as Flowers. You can lose scoring the second most points in the league, and you could exactly. win scoring the second yeah. least points in the That's, league. Yeah, thanks, Max. That's what I was trying to say. It, it, it's a crap shoot. I'm still not in a playoff spot. But Flowers, crazy. if you think I'm not in a playoff if, spot, if you think you know football because you're fantasy Batman, you're an idiot. Like, it has nothing to do with you knowing football. It's pure, pure luck. But uh, congrats, up dog. I want to see you get in there. I, I, Thank you. I got to win next week. I got to do something. I got Pittman back. It's nice. I missed him. We can't trade anymore either, right? No, deadline was Sunday. Oh, damn. Sh Shaddy. I offered Shaddy Kyler Murray because he had Burrow, who we're going to get into. I offered him Kyler Murray for Derrick Henry straight up. He turned that down because he went out and got C.J. Stroud, who's lighting it up. Did he get C.J. Stroud? Yeah, so I tried to make a blockbuster for Henry, but it didn't work He out. might as well drop him now. He's done. He's out. Yeah, his team sucks. Um, let's talk some NFL football bets. Um, I had the Chiefs. Did you take the Eagles? I took, uh, last night I took the over in the first half and it hit. Did it? It did in the last two minutes. Uh, you took the over in the rain? I did, yeah, I didn't know it was raining. Did oh, you check? <laughs> I did check the weather. I'm like, I tell you, I might check it for my fantasy football quarterback, but I am not checking it when wait, I throw a thousand dollars on the why first you, half over. Why would you take the over when it's raining? Uh, it was Crazy. 23. I said, you know. Last year, yeah, the first out. two plays of the Super Bowl last year were touchdowns. So, therefore, I'm thinking, okay, this is a little matchup, a little preview for yeah. what could be again. Although they were playing in perfect weather for the Super Bowl. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you hit it. Who playing cares? Playing in a dome. Who gives a shit? You hit a good bet. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had the Broncos. I took the Giants. Uh, I took it on the chin with the Chiefs. And the Avs killed me last night, too. I mean, the Avs, can we talk about it? Hey, boys, boys, boys. Like, I I'm your biggest supporter. I really am. But like that, the way they, that was the worst game I've ever seen Devon Taves play. And even McCarr made plays. But like, Uppy, if you see their last five minutes of that period, circling, not getting pucks out, spinning pucks out to their slot, they deserve to lose that way. Um, 
But let's talk about big news here. Dave Portnoy, who a guy I absolutely love, had the same bet you did. Joe Burrow goes into the game. He's already got a bad wrist. He's out for the year. What are your thoughts? Your Super Bowl bet? Did you did you did you get your money back? Mm, no, I no. didn't. I text my I well sent out a message to the guy that handles my you know plays finances. Uh, no, I basically said, listen, I'm going to join this class action lawsuit. I don't know if you want to get you know your name involved with this, but uh, well, what do you think about giving uh, you know a little rebate on this bet? Because not only did I take him to win the Super Bowl, but I took him to win the uh, yeah you know, the AFC. Yes, yeah, so. He kind of laughed. And said, yeah, I bet, he, I bet he did. Yeah. He said, no, it's not not possible, which he always uses, uh, what would happen if it was shoes on the other foot? I'm like, come on. You're like, well, the shoes never on the other foot, yeah. all right, bud? So yeah. just give my money back. Tough break, but is there an investigation going to go into Well, this? poor like, buddy. What's what your gripe? Is it because he wasn't on the injury report? Yeah, not a thing. Like, not a wrist injury, nothing, and you What's can tell. What's your gripe? <laughs> yeah, my gripe. Like, it's hurts playing football. Like, what? No, yeah, so listen, no, like, for if yeah, so Portnoy pretty banged up. Listen, Portnoy's doing a full like. Obviously, any chance for him to go out, Goodell, he's going to go out. He's doing a full on lawsuit. And Portnoy's dad's a lawyer. He did this video that was Portnoy and Portnoy. So, but a class action, I can jump on it. Too. It I was can, great, right? It was great. He he did this like call like well, what what's it called when the president comes in? State of the Union. He came in and, like gave a State of the Union. Yeah. To all my fellow degenerate gamblers out there, yeah, I'm here to fight for you against that clown, Roger Goodell. Because if Burrow was on the injury report the week before, I'm not saying the updog would have checked it, but Portnoy, a guy like that, would have would have had that. Yeah, he probably would have waited to see before he put he put sixty seven thousand on him to win a million bucks. So that's I that's a bit cash. Yeah, that's a lot of cash for anyone, and I I actually threw a lot of cash on him too. I'm not going to say how much. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But it's an unfortunate situation, and I don't know if there's proof or not. But if there is. You know, where there's smoke, there's just a fire. Well, I'll tell you what, Portnoy will not give up. I mean, he'll he'll go after Goodell. Like, I don't know, uh, it's above my pay grade, but I know he's going after him. He'll he'll well try to do something to prove that the NFL knew and they didn't put him on there. Who knows? I think you go after the Bengals, but the protocol well, he is... He said he's going after the NFL. Yeah. Well, you remember he got arrested, right? You remember him from the click? Yeah, 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 yeah sure. remember the click. The best clip ever of Prince you can find at Portnoy is like, Oh, Roger, you ripped my skinny jeans. They pulled out. I was like, you ripped my skinny jeans, Roger. I'm outside and the Patriots come back and you ripped my fucking skinny jeans. It's one of the biggest, cl- greatest clips ever. So, um, How'd you make it on your bets? So you had uh, Vikings money line. Yeah, so, so I won last night. I had Vikings money line. I, um, yeah, You know what? The Rams cost me at the very end of the game last week. They, yeah, I needed Matt Stafford. There's a first and goal from like the six, last drive. And they run, they run, they throw a stupid slant. They don't get in. They kick a field goal to go up one. I had him at, you know, minus two. I bought him they, at minus two. They were home favorites. They were home favorites, the Rams. Wow. That's weird. I had him at minus two. They win by one, like a complete joke. So that's a bad beat. Um, and then, you know, I took the Bills, and I took the Bills nice. second half. So my boy Josh Allen, I knew he was going to come back strong. He's had a couple off weeks, but I knew he was going to come back strong. Um, I lied, man. I like the way the Bills played. I mean, played they ran great. the ball great, and they, he was seemed to be getting the ball out of his hands a lot quicker, doing a little screen play, not forcing it. Using his legs. if Yeah, big time. If he could just manage the ball a little bit. I, I love watching him sling it, but I, I think he's this new offensive coordinator has maybe said, fella, just let's hang on to the pigskin a little bit here. I and took I mean, it over in the Houston-Arizona game. Okay, Did it go over? I thought C.J. Stroud would be slinging it. There was two touchdowns in the first like four minutes, so I was looking really good. And then just they laid an egg in the fourth. There was only six points. CJ struck three interceptions down the stretch. They won though, right? They won, but again, it's like you guy th- throws three interceptions. That's that throws a mojo in my my over. Unless yeah. he's throwing him in his own end zone. That does hurt your over. Yeah. So I mean they're talking about he might be like MVP right not now. Not anymore, not after last week. No. Last week was a poor yeah, it was poor performance. Who's yeah. the MVP right now, Max? Tyreek Hill, maybe? Lamar Jackson? No, it's always a quarterback. Is it Lamar? Yeah, but I know, that's a good question. There's Maybe. not like a clear cut. Jared Goff? No. No, God, no. not. I, I just, the Detroit Lions are like top in their division. Yeah, he threw three picks this week too, I think. Okay. So he's, he's kind of fallen off. What about? I uh, would say the boys in Kansas City like. Yeah, but is Mahomes having an MVP? No, here? he's not. But that's because the guys can't catch the ball. Like, you know those machines they have where they send them, like, just yeah. get those guys going. They're working on them. They got the most drops in the NFL. The Chiefs are not going to get to the Super Bowl. Uh, not that it's going out on a limb, but not with this offense. 
brutal. Now it was raining. I get it. It was raining, but that catch for Scanlon or whatever, right on his tape. Yeah. Game over. Corn dogs. That was on the tape. That was on the tape. That's breakaway in the last couple of minutes and you just fumble in. Yeah. But um, anyways, congrats on your win up dog. Back to the drawing board for me. I got to find a way to sneak in these playoffs here. I got to get in. I just want to get in and get a chance. Um, Hurts. Soup. Our boys at DraftKings have Jalen Hurts as their favorite right now. Yeah. There you go, man. There you go. He didn't play great. I'll tell you what, the Kansas City Chiefs did good. I'm sure everyone was going to do this. They gave them looks. Like, they didn't allow them to get to third and short. Like, they were they were, they were, were blitzing them right away. Like, first and second down, they were giving them almost like third and long looks. And they didn't even get into position where they could do the old tush push or brotherly, brotherly shove. I thought Kansas City's deep played unreal. They were unreal. Yeah. Which I have them in my fantasy, too. I, I Not, Let me ask you guys this. I got two defenses on my squad. Is that bad? Well, the trade deadline's gone. I know. So, and have both had their buys already? Yeah. So just drop one of them and pick up a player. Yeah, what are the I had an ep- I got a couple of What spots. do the matchups look like for both of them the next exactly. five weeks? See, that's what I'm thinking. I got KC and San Fran, two great Ds. Yeah. Right? And Flowers is like, why do you have two D? No one has that. I go, because you want one of them. I'm keeping both on my squad. That's just what I'm thinking, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, it's working because I beat his ass. Yeah, you did beat him. That's got to feel good. Yeah. It's a crapshoot, though. Fantasy is a crapshoot. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about retiring after this week. I'm thinking about hanging him up. Me and Cody. Cody, I might hang him up with you, fella. Super Wednesday. This is going to come out on Super Wednesday. Up dog. It was the best night of the year. Oh, man, I missed it. It's not going to be the same, is it? Uh, they- I don't even know if I'm going to go out. I got a reservation right now at Rothschilds, but I'm 50-50 even going out. I'm playing golf. Is it? Yeah. I might go out. Let's go out. I don't know. Take the girls know. out, have a little, yeah, maybe have a little dance up, miss, maybe. miss up, you know. Yeah, I, I got a rezzo right now. The the prime tail. They'll, hate, they'll hate us Thursday morning. It'll be great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, just sit there and watch football. I do like. It was probably the best day to be hungover because you got three days of three yeah. days of football and turkey uh, dinners coming at you. I know. You it's get your turkey uh, turkey dinner. I'm plans. on the Bay Club. Nice. We'll save Thanksgiving for Uppies World here. Yeah. Um. Do you single guys out there? Come on, baby. Pick up the slack for me and the up dog on Super Wednesday. Get out there, mix it up, get involved. If you're in these towns where these girls come back from college, listen, they're home for two reasons, to eat some turkey and have a time. Yeah. So for God's sakes, boys, get her done. <laughs> get her done. And for the guys in the National League, if you're young and single, you better already have a best table. I do even need a reservation on Super Wednesday. Skip dinner. Grab a slice of pie in the dressing room or get a milk uh, protein shake in you and get right to that club. And you better have the best table, and you just enjoy yourself. I know, because y'all got the day off Thursday. Yeah, there's no games. You do. No I practice. For the older guys that have to cook, like me, you, you, the mature guys, the I guys that- Oh, we'll save that. Yeah, no, we'll but, but even for those guys, get out there. End up cooking hungover. Make sure that turkey's already brined. If they're young and single at the show, they ain't cooking. They got something coming in, catered into them, I would hope. But uh, last but not least here on, on our little intro up, dog, uh, our boy Broadway, Jimmy Scoop. It's his birthday today. That's why I wore the Parlay Cafe Broadway. Uh, great job by Prince. He posted some stuff about him. Prince does a great job on him in Broadway. Love you, Broadway. Miss yes, you, buddy. buddy. Happy birthday. How old would have Broadway been today, boys? Broadway would have been 34 today, big fella. So, Broadway. Crazy. Crazy. Happy birthday, Scoopsy. Yeah, Scoopsy, we miss you. We love you, buddy. Happy birthday. Uh, we'll be right back here at Mr. Curfew. Welcome back to Mr. Curfew. Up his world. You. Party time. Excellent. All right, all right. All right, up dog. Big weekend for you. I knew you were itching to get on the road. How was it? Put this hat on. How was it, fella? I'm going to put this hat on quick for Uppies World. Why, why wouldn't I? It's be, be crazy not to. Yeah. To shout out to Sheldon Walitsky, who we're going to see up in Aspen in a couple weeks. Uh, he was a main sponsor of the 14th annual Coyotes Alumni Tournament. Um, listen, it was a great time. It was a great time. Shout out to PJ and Kyle Quincy. Uh, that was our foursome. We had a great group of guys. It's a good foursome there. Listen, g- great alumni. Um, I see McCulloch, who I played with back in the day. Darcy Hordachuk was there. Um, <laughs> our boy Dave Scatcherd, what a beauty. He's oh. ripped. He's the man. Um, and then Brian Troche, Lanny McDonald. Chatted with Gary Roberts. He was there. Guy's in shape. Yeah, I know. Rob's beauty. Um, who else? There was a, bun- there was a bunch of good guys, good older guys. Uh, Gus Adams, Greg Adams. He's part of the part of the group there. Um, listen, it was a good time. Long tournament, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Too long. We, we, we got out of there Monday morning. We, it was too much. I had to we get home. I got the parents coming to town this week, but, uh, we stayed downtown at the W that old town. 
I tell you, most of our listeners probably been to Old Town before. Strap your boots on. It is, it's go time. It's go time. So we we ended up watching some football. We um, we went out a couple nice dinners. Biz came and met us for for dinner the one night. We had nice. dinners at Mastro's City Hall there. Standard joint. That's a standard play. You get the the butter cake. How are you? Butter cake. How are you? Um, it was nice. Drank some good wine, fella. It was. I know it was how you time. It was a good time. Um, have you seen these Smoltz and Heat Daddy, these guys? They're dressed yeah, up. Yeah, I dressed missed them. Uh, they dr- were going to come meet us one night. We just took forever getting out of dinner. They're dressing up, going to games now. Sit in front row, watching games, mic'd up. These guys are, these guys are. They're watching crazy. their games in their gear. They were, at Mullet? They were front row at Mullet. Yeah. Heat Daddy had his helmet on and everything out that. <laughs> Smoltz, he had a wig <laughs> on with a tied, uh, kind of NASCAR jacket and these guys are beauties, man. I mean, they're 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 going above and beyond for content. I gotta appreciate that. Yeah, boys. absolutely. It's good for the game. It's, it's great for, for the game. game. It's great for the game. How was the weather in Scottsdale? Perfect. The or weather what? was absolutely like eighty-five or what? It was seventy-five. Little cloud yeah, cover. That's perfect. One morning it rained. It was nice. Uh, perfect. You, I mean, you are a Scottsdale guy. If love if, Scottsdale, you could golf every day. And uh, I don't need to golf every. You know, you get your outdoor, indoor, outdoor kind of living area, entertainment area. Yeah, it's that's that's too long of a golf tournament, though, boys. I, yeah, yeah, no, totally, it's, it is too long. You fly them in, you have a dinner the night before. One round is all you yeah. need. Yeah, McBean, Beanie, you don't need. It's a little long, but uh, thanks for having me. It was great. Smoked some good cigars, drank some good wine. Cujo, shout out to Cujo. He was there. Yeah, I won. Love closest to the pin in two shots on this one hole. I had a complete little tap in birdie. And I got a signed Cujo bottle of wine, nice. like a nice Magnum. He signed it for me up on stage. Beauty. That guy's a legend. Leafs legend, man. He's a Leafs legend. Leafs legend. Legend was blues. He's a legend. Yeah, shout out to the Coyotes alumni. That's good stuff, though. That's what we want around the league. But hey, maybe shorten that up for the boys. Hey, three days. Boys are a lot. Boys are old. No, boys are old. And it's not like a member guest. It's like for it's for charity. I think two days is enough. A little event. I agree. Keep it classy. All right. Thanks for giving up, dog. You've been hoarded up to talk about what do you got? What do you Ooh, got? What do you thanks. got, buddy? Well, I just brined the turkey. I was a little late showing up today for uh, for our thing here. I showed up right on we time. We called out right on time for you, buddy. Showed up right on time. But uh, no, I was brining the turkey. Um, I got Scott and Mandy coming in town. Um, they're actually probably landing just as I'm speaking. So I'm excited to see my folks. It's been a minute. Uh, I got Christina. I got her brother-in-law, Matt, and the kids coming by. Yeah, you know what? We're just going to indulge. Indulge in some good food. Hang out. Probably Joe DeMarco. Big guy's probably pop over yeah more than welcome i'm gonna say big guy no way big guy shows up well he's got no plans yet eh? no way he shows up demarco will be there but big guy no chance you don't think eh? i don't think i'm gonna take the under i'm gonna take (laughs) the guy if you're listening take the under big guy i'm gonna take the under um that's awesome up dog get that what are you you smoking it or how you making it we're smoking this turkey love it yeah we followed this girl on instagram i had she's got a nice look to her she teaches you how to really rub the salt around the turkey and and brine it and get it all prepped so and then she fires it in the trigger. So there we're going to kind of go off that. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Get it in you. Save me some turkey. I'll have a turkey sandwich if you have get some leftovers, eh? Save us. I, I don't know. There's some hungry f- fellas coming by the house. I'm not sure there'll be enough left over for you. Well, if you got some extra, <laughs> throw, it, throw it on a Hawaiian dinner. That's the best thing about Thanksgiving. Oh, the Hawaiian dinner rolls. The next day, turkey on Hawaiian dinner roll. Ooh, my dad does mustard. make a great gravy, bud. Great yeah. gravy. Yeah, great it's gravy. all about the gravy. It's all about the gravy. I, I think it's all about the stuffing, personally. Oh, the stuffing. I'm a big stuffing guy. Yeah. I'm looking forward to crushing some stuffing. Uh, Updog, that's great. I'm glad your family's in town, buddy. Everyone out there, have a great Thanksgiving. Updog, Quinn Hughes here. DraftKings odds, baby. I want a Princey. Unless he's leading the league in scoring. Yeah, he's... I he, watched the play last night. He deserves to. He's better than everyone on the ice. Every game. This is a statement here, too. And maybe this is just to get this guy going a little bit right now. In my opinion, he's better than Kale McCarr right now. Like the way he's moving, the way he's 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 walking that line, the way he's playing defensively. Listen, uh, McCarr, he had to rehab all summer. I, I caught an interview that he, he had on TNT with Biz and the boys where he said he didn't get to work out. He had to rehab. And I'm not saying Kale McCarr's having a bad year. But I, when you can't get a full summer of training in, to me he doesn't look like he normally does. Like he's yeah. making some mistakes that he never makes. And I mean, he's human. I get it. But anyways, Quinn Hughes, I wanted to get the, the odds on the Art Ross. We couldn't find him on DraftKings. But at the start of the year, you could have got him at plus 1,800 to win the Norris. Now he's plus 600. But I, I will, like, do you think this guy can hold on to win the scoring? Wait, could be David's not having a year. Dry settles in one. Wouldn't it be something if he won the scoring? Yeah, yeah, modern day D-man to win the scoring. I mean, Carlson had 100. Why, why don't we just say, do you think he can get 100 points? What's he on pace for? I mean, he's got 30 points in 19 games. 
So he's on got pace equal. for 120. Got equal. He's on pace for about 125 points. Yeah. That's, uh, I mean, listen. And he's playing. Yeah, go ahead. That's insane. So yeah. if he if he can keep this up, even if he slows down a little bit, he's got the Norris locked up. Oh, yeah. And can he win the Art Ross? Can he win the Hart and clean them all up? Has there been a guy ever to clean up the Hart, the Art Ross, and the Norris in one year? No idea. But the but only that's... problem he's going to win the Art Ross is Pedersen and JT Miller are going to have something to say about it. Because they're all tied. I think, I think. I think they're all tied in points. Or yeah, maybe but, Pedersen has twenty nine, and Miller has twenty nine. So that, but he's the guy they go off of. If I, he's not on that power play, they don't lead the league in scoring. And the thing I love about him is like, listen, Carlson had a great year last year. I'm not gonna, you know, he's, he's playing good for the Pens, but like he he didn't give a fuck about defense last year. This Quinn Hughes has not sacrificed the defense to get offense. I no. mean, he's out there playing against the top lines, and he is just jumping. Tight turning, it, it's sick, man. Yeah, uh, I think what's highlighted most um, when you watch him play is is when he's high in his own, when he's high in the offensive zone, Obi, and you should be like trying to go laterally across the blue line while attacking a guy one on one. You're never really like beating him and getting an offensive chance. He's actually like looking at a guy, making one play at him, and then he's gone like left, and he can go down and. His goal last night, for example, they played San Jose. It was it was a tie game. It was zero zero. It was kind of scary if if you bet Vancouver minus three fifty, which I almost closed at minus four hundred. I saw, but this you know tie game, pretty close game. In fact, San Jose scores a goal that they call back goalie interference, and then I think the next shift, Quinton Hughes. I mean, he looks at the guy, blows past him wide, gets down into an impossible angle, and just goes spink, spink, dink, spink, dink. Um, you know, just it's it's nice to see that these young players are starting to evolve into what you know the new NHL looks like, yeah. and just how excellent the skill is, and how great these young players are. I mean, as good as Vancouver's played, yeah, you can't you can't bet them at minus three. Although I saw it, my I closed at minus four hundred. You, no, you can't. You can't. No, because they still haven't have proven to me. Like you know, I don't know. You just that's that's big time. I took I took the Blues against San Jose last weekend and I got smoked. They lost five one. Yeah, the I Blues saw. they're in. The Blues are in one. The Blues are in one. No, oh, they lose five one San Jose. Five one to San Jose. Then they go into Anaheim. Did they get beat? Did Anaheim beat them Sunday? They beat the Never. Ducks. They, they beat, beat the Ducks. Yeah, they were up okay. three enough. I turned it off. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they had the rookie party. Don't they have the rookie party coming up or something? They did. I think yesterday on a Monday. eh? Yeah. Can't figure out a better schedule than that. Ah. Uh, why don't you just have your rookie party in Vegas? I mean, I used to be a Hollywood guy for my rookie party, but isn't Vegas just the no brainer slam dunk rookie party? Always, but yeah. it's all based on schedule. Well, you it's make all, room. Yeah, you, yeah. Make, well, you told uh, you make room, but it's all unless you one. unless you fly in that night and you're out after the game. There's nothing you can do about that. That's true. But you'd like to think the schedule makers would not do that to teams, but yeah, the gods, the you, gods. You think the schedule gods would just give you to look down on you and shine some light and give you yeah. a break. They always did that for you, fellow. They always yeah. I, I listen, I like if you can get if you can get Quinn Hughes at plus six hundred for the Norris, I say Even jump still, on yes. jump on that today. And if anyone could get him for the Art Ross, could see the lines, send them to me on X, please. I'm just curious on what they were at the start or what they are now. Um he probably won't lead the league in scoring, let's be honest. But I love him at plus six hundred. I might I might tickle that right when we're done uh recording here. But Quinn Hughes, like we said last week, we're keeping your beers on ice, keep it going, fella. Uh, we'll be right back here, Mr. Curfew. Up dog, she's milk carton time. She's milk carton yep. time. Yeah. First of all, listen, when 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 Lupo chimes in on your social media, you know something's coming to his attention. The Leafs wearing their blue helmets with white jerseys, enough. Not perfect. It's awful. It's brutal. Carolina did it. It sucks with their red and white. Uh, to the Leafs organization, you don't need it. Don't, don't mess around with a good thing. Just wear your white buckets. It's the NHL, that's why they give us two helmets. Yeah. You wear the whites with the whites, the blue with the blues. So you're on the milk carton for that up dog. I, I, I just don't like it, fella. I, I couldn't agree more. You know what? Just take a page out of the Vancouver Canucks, like the black. Uh, black. Man, what, they're wearing, are they going back to the black and golds? Because they're wearing them every night, and I yeah. think they should. Yeah, they should. Do you that know how hard I tried? Best jersey right now. In my two years, I tried so hard to talk to the trainers about, I'm like, give us one night with these jerseys. And now I flip them on. They're playing every game in them. What player reminds you of that jersey every time you see it? I mean, Pablo Burry. Totally. Trevor Linden. Kirk. Kirk McLean. Dave Babich. <laughs> Dave Babich. Babich. Gina Ojek. Yeah, God Gina. Gina. Soul. Kirk McLean. Yeah. That was a great era. Yeah. Alexander McGillney. Ooh. Yeah. How did he look yeah. good? They're good. They're good tarps. 
Uh, listen, another guy I'm going to fire on the milk card right now is a guy I think you played against, and I would have loved to play against this guy, Connor Murphy. Listen, he goes out, he throws a big hit against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Good. I love physical hockey. Tanner Janot comes and challenges him. He goes past Tanner Janot to fight the, the smallest guy on their team, Michael Ismount. You know this guy? No. Is that how you say his name? Yeah, it, well, Ismount. Ismount. Smallest guy on the team. He goes past Janot. I get it. You don't want to fight Janot. Goes past Janot. And fights, grabs the smallest guy on the ice. Murphy, you're on the milk carton. There comes a time where if you want to play physical and act like a hero out there, you're going to have to fight a guy that you don't want to fight. Bugard for me, Kip Brandon of the Miners, Rocky Thompson. I list can go on and on of guys I didn't want to fight. Give your balls a tug. Step up there and fight Janot. If you lose, your stock goes up in the league to your teammates, to everyone else. Yep. It was embarrassing to grab the smallest guy when Janot called you out. So for that, Murphy, you're on the milk carton, buddy. It's just a I, bad look to be up, dog. Yeah, and everyone's seen it, so he'll be it's he'll have to guy. Hell at some point. You got to fight him there. When you're that big. And that's the perfect time. Totally. You don't want to square off with Janot. If Janot comes at you, just drop your stuff and start chucking and hope to God maybe he, he falls and the lines may get in there. But to go past him to fight the smallest guy in the Tampa Bay Lightning, to me, that's that's embarrassing as an ex-player. Uh, that's not how you gain the respect from your teammates, in my opinion. And for that, you're on the milk curtain. I'm going to screw a few, buddy. Should we uh, just add, because this is our next little segment, but we should put the Columbus Blue Jackets on the milk carton. Yeah. They've lost nine in a row. Nine or, they winless in nine or ten games here. I oh, watched perfect. them play the other night against the uh, Philadelphia Flyers. I hammered the Flyers. Listen, Patrick Liney was a healthy scratch. Yep. So we could also put Liney on the milk carton. There's no reason when you have that much talent, two goals, one assist in nine games. I get, I don't even know the coach's name there. I, he comes in, he's trying to change the culture. I get it. I appreciate from a guy who's been healthy scratched a lot that you're going to put Patrick Liney up, yeah. up, up in the press box. But the fact that they're in this predicament, and the reason I'm putting the Columbus Blue Jackets on the milk carton is everything that went with Babcock, Uppy, we said, like, hopefully these guys would rally around it. And here we are again. You know, they're 4-11-4. Four, four, and four. Come on. Yeah, man. no, I mean, I just, their best players are just on, not man. Johnny Goudreau's two goals, five assists. Patrick Liney, I, I feel like every time I watch this guy, he's getting the puck in great areas. He's shooting it, but he's not hitting the net. Like, he's ripping pucks as hard as I've ever seen a guy shoot it. Just got to hit the net. He, so he's going to, you know, he's going to figure it out eventually, but you got to keep things, you know, simple when things get hard. So, and, yeah, and I get coming in changing the culture, and as guys, as depth guys that we were, like, you want to sit out. I mean, there's you're, you're not good enough to sit out Patrick Liney, unfortunately. Like, no. I, I, one game, I get it, but. No, I don't want to sit him out no, you, longer than that. Yeah. But you got to sit him out once. I mean, that's what I thought Darnell Nurse should have happened, but you got to sit a guy out one time. Yeah. Just have a look at the game from the press box. It's the same thing as him coming to the rink saying, I got the flu, I'm not going to be my best. Well, you're sitting because you're not your best. Yeah. And and then maybe you'll figure it out. You know what it's like to watch oh, a right. game up and you get a little you're bit right. embarrassed. You're right. You get brought down a little bit. Even if your paychecks are high, you're still like, I guess I'm not good enough to just be average on this team, right? No one's good enough in the NHL just to be average. No, you're right. Who you are. Yeah, that, and that's how you change the culture. But I'm just disappointed in the, in the guys in that dressing room. And I, Branson's a great guy who you know plays hard. And they got Boone Jenner. They got some character in there. Like, it's an unforgiving league. But to be sitting right here after everything that went down, um, I just thought they'd rally around that and, and get off to a better start. It's, and they got Proveroff and Severson on the back end. Like, they got some pieces, man. And Patrick Liney, come on, fella. Like, yeah. Johnny Hockey, dude, like, Two, five, and seven in 19 games. Like, I don't know. I mean, I never had many points, but you got to compete, right? I know. Four, 11, and four on the season for these guys. That This is an uphill battle to, you I know, mean, we're almost done. at the quarter point, bud. Yeah. Right? Yeah, we're going to get into, we're going to get into the old American Thanksgiving and, and see how our playoff picks are doing. And that is, you're 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 in a tough division trying to battle back the whole season. It's not not great. I have some pride in there. I, I'm sure guys do. And Liney, I guess I'm talking to you. Like, Columbus, the people of Columbus are good people. Right, they they try to support this team. Like, have some pride. Like, let's go here. Like the pack, the fact that Patrick Liney is getting healthy scratches, it's embarrassing to him. So, um, I think if I was the coach, though, I would just stuff him on my fourth line because you still need him for the power play. Right? Do you just yeah, do that, or, or I, yeah, but good, even the because, PP, like, no, I actually I don't agree. No, but listen, if you if you give if you put it by play him on your fourth line and only spot him in as soon as he gets a power play, as a skilled guy, I would only imagine he wants to score a goal to stick it up your ass. No. There's no way you're yeah. going to go out there and mail it in on the power play. No way. Yeah, I know, but this is the thing. Is he doesn't, in this case, he's being set because he doesn't deserve to be on the power play. But it's one thing you don't even deserve to be in the lineup, but 
the power play, I would much be more pissed off if I, if I sat like in the crowd and I watched another guy get a chance in my spot on the power play yeah. and then succeed there. That way it just creates a little bit more of a, okay, I can't, I think the power play is when the guys actually have to work the hardest to keep the puck, yeah. to make the right plays. And then when you're just average, you're on the power play, your game just gets that much worse. It doesn't, you can't like find your game on the power play. I, I don't think. I don't know. I didn't play power play. No, me neither. But yeah. you see it with your, you know what it's like when you're watching guys on your team, like you're, you're pulling for them, but the power play is not the time that they just, you know, find good habits again. Patrick Line is out of the lineup, not because what he's doing is wrong in the power play. It's what he's doing overall with his game. Totally. Yeah, so uh, I'll be Pascal Vincent. No disrespect to him. I said earlier I didn't know his name. He's, he's a young guy that's coming in to try to, you know, change the culture. I get it. It's ballsy. He's obviously talked to the GM about it. So we'll see. But for right yep. now, they're on the milk carton. Line, you're on the milk carton. Uh, but hey, the milk carton sometimes gets you going, eh, up, dog? Yeah. Sometimes Hubie, gets Hubie you. Hubie jumped going, off it. Baby. Had a good game. Uh, good. Rumor mill, real quick here. Little little self made rumor mill here. I'm missing curfew. The Flyers right now are sitting second in the Metro. Listen, I get it. We're only 18 games in. Uh, we're about to go through our playoff predictions. But around American Thanksgiving, as ex players, we always said this is kind of where you know where your team is. Should the Flyers try to make a trade or do they just stay the course with what they got and wait till closer to the deadline? But when I watch them play right now, and they, they only have 1.2 million in cap space, which I thought they had more. If you added another guy to this lineup right now, the way they're playing, it's got to be hard for Jonesy and DB not to be like, fuck, who's out yeah. there? Who can I get? Because they're playing great. What type of guy is a guy that... They need another goal scorer. So you, you need a goal scorer yeah. to come in and yeah. be a guy that plays well under torts. Patrick Kleine. That's a top. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, listen, <laughs> a, a, anyone <laughs> would love to make a trade. A, anyone would love Someone to bring make a trade. Goal scorer. You're right? Someone would love to, to come in and help this team kind of just continue to go in the right direction, but also get to the new level. Um, I just love what these guys are doing with, you know, limited respect in the league. They're great. Limited respect. Hard. Guys are, you know, early on in the season, you know, even the odds makers are making the Philadelphia Flyers, you know, home dogs, plus 220 at home. It's like, dude, show a little respect. Yeah. Show a little respect. Well, they are these now. These guys are taking it, you know, taking it personal. Travis Sanheim leading the team in points. Konechny, who I love, 11 goals so far this year. I mean, He's on pace for 35, 40 goals. Good for him. Dude. Cam Atkinson back from injury, 13 points. How are you? scored one the other night against the Blue Jackets, Konecki, where he came down. He, but he brought it out just underneath the circle, underneath the, the face-off circle, pulled it out, look, 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 nothing, short side spink dink on uh, Martin for Columbus. I was like, wow, that kid can shoot the puck like that? I didn't I, I didn't know that. So I love Konecki. Uh, just something I wanted to bring up, up dog. If, yeah. if you are a GM, it's, when I watch him play, the first thing I think is, wow, this team's competing under torts. If they had another, you know, goal scorer up front. But by the way, just just highlighting how great of a job Danny B and Jonesy and all the guys brought in to try to help change this culture. I mean, what a great job so far you guys have been doing. And it's great to see the Philadelphia Flyers back. Totally. And they got eight games straight coming up against the Metro Division. So after these eight games, wow. we'll probably find out more where they're going to be. Size yourself up. Size yourself. Because if, if they go, you know, two and six. They're going to fall out of a playoff spot, but if they go six and two or something like that, or you know five and three, we'll we'll see. So um, Thanksgiving down here, up dog. We we've touched on it, Uppy's world. Uh, we're looking forward to Super Wednesday, and then again some turkey and the boys. Here's our preseason playoff picks, and for people out there, the the Thanksgiving is where you look at your team. You're 20 games in. All right, where are we? And there's a stat. I'm not a fucking analytics guy, but like if you're in the playoffs on American Thanksgiving. 80% or something you make that you make the playoffs. So in the Metro up dog, you had Jersey Carolina Pitt. I had Carolina, I had Carolina J Jersey Rangers. Uh, right now it's Rangers in there. Rangers, Flyers, Caps. Fucking caps, man. I, I was gonna take the caps. You and the loops, more loops than you. Loops talked me off it. But the Rangers, I guess, is what I want to touch on. Man, this team's playing great under Peter Lavulette. Um you know, I do think I I do think the Devils and Carolina end up either second or third in the Metro. I think the Flyers or Caps, if they're gonna get in, are gonna be a wild card team. Um so maybe this will prove us wrong here, but we were we were a little off on this one, fella. I guess so. And I mean I'm looking here, the like the Devils are eight, seven, and one. And that's that's unacceptable. I mean, they got their their kid coming back in. He had a big yeah, game Saturday, they... scored a goal, he came back strong. It's good to see. Pittsburgh nine and eight. Yeah, you can't count out 
Carolina or New Jersey no. right now. Carolina's no, no coming. Chance. Carolina's starting to come here. They're going to start coming here. I think it's going to be good. But you're right. There's a, there's time for a change here. The Sabers are in a in a playoff spot. The Wings, no, the Sabers aren't. The no. Sabers are eight nine. No, oh, I'm so sorry. I was just looking at the. Uh, so yeah, we'll jump. We'll go in the Atlantic. Uh, you had Toronto, Tampa, Buff. I had Toronto, Tampa, Florida, Bruins, man. Bruins. I mean, your boy Monty. I mean, this guy's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, he's he did damn well, right? It's crazy to me. Um, I do think it's going to finish Boston, Florida, Toronto in the top three. I think Tampa get in as a wild card, but we were a little off here. I guess I'm asking you, what, what about your Buffalo Sabres? Ballsy pick, brother. Ballsy, ballsy the Sabres. Pick. Yeah, it yeah. Was. They're not doing too good, are they? Well, Eight, your boy, nine, your boy, your boy Thompson got hurt after he yeah, ripped his skates. After he ripped yeah. his skates, he got hurt. Sorry, bud. Yeah. I mean, he took a puck off the wrist. At least he was in the lane. Actually, if you were more in the lane, you would have took it off his shin pads. That's unfortunate. I you're scoring 47 guy. goals. You should be blocking shots in November anyways. You shouldn't be. No, no I no, agree. You shouldn't be. No. Um, and then the wild card, I had Boston Pitt as my wild card teams. You had Boston, Florida. Uh, right now it's the Lightning and Hurricanes. I'm still worried about Pittsburgh, man. Um, Don't keep just falling off. I think the Caps, man. Yeah. I like the. I think the Caps are going to find a way to get in as a veteran team. They're, they're starting to find their game. They're starting to get in shape. I don't think the Hurricanes will be a wild card team. I'm going to go with the Lightning I think the lightning caps, man. I really do. I really do. I don't know. We'll see. But we were we were a little off, fella. We were a little <laughs> off, and then we'll go out, we'll go out let's west go here. West here, maybe we'll go out west here. Odds quick. in the west. No, we fucked this up too. Ah, let's see. So you had Edmonton, Vegas, Kings. I had Edmonton, Kings, Vegas. Nobody had the Canucks where they are. Golden Knights, Canucks, Kings. Right now, I don't think the Canucks are going anywhere. In fact. I think the Oilers are so far back, they're not going to even, they're thinking if they're going to get in, it's going to be a wild card team. Canucks, Golden Knights, Kings, yeah. I think is what's going to be. I mean, listen, those three are the best teams, I think, in the West right now, so they should be where they are. Those yeah. teams are playing great. They're tough teams to play against, so they deserve to be right there where they are. Good luck catching them. Yeah, Stars, Avalanche, Jets in the Central. The Jets are proving everyone wrong. We both had Colorado, Dallas. You went with your St. Louis Blues, and I went with the Minnesota Wild. I'm a little concerned about the Wild, my man. I'm just like, look at them. They're, they're 14 points. I, I don't know, man. It's just like, it's, I don't know. It's not perfect. I, it's not perfect. It? I'm Gene Everson. And then our wild card teams, I had Vancouver and Nashville. You had Mini and Seattle. Vancouver's going to get in. I do believe that. Um, I, don't, I don't even know if they'll be a wild card team. I think they finished in the top three. Nashville, big win for them the other night. Fact that he's playing great. The fact that he's playing young, yeah, he's playing. He's playing really good. The Preds seven I and ten. They get in. I mean, it's crazy that the Flames are seven, eight, and three, and the Preds are seven and ten. Why? Yeah, the, it seems like Calgary's been just stinking, but I guess they've been they've been Calgary's, battling back. Calgary's battling won, back. They're five one and one in the last one. Yeah, they're battling back. Yeah, shout out to Graham Dillette. Ever since he wore the O'Brien Flames jersey to the Krakens game, they've been on fire, and he keeps texting me about it. So Dillette, you beauty. What about your Seattle Kraken? They're hanging in there. Are they going to get start, in what? Tough start. 7, they're 8, 5 right, so right far. Um, they are in, but they played 20 games, so they played a lot more games than most teams. Um, count on them to just be, again, Obi, the hard team that won't go away. And those teams, usually with the right structure, they end up making the playoffs. Yeah. And it all, die, as we know, dies on goaltending. Kraken. And uh, – I think they, they have what it takes. They better not have to play the Avs in the first round again. That's all I got to say. I, I can't live through that again. Uh, hey, fellas, you want to put a little tickle on the DraftKings app? Phoenix Coyotes to make the playoffs. Right now, one point out. Could you imagine Gary Batman having to deal with the Coyotes playing an NHL game, NHL playoff game at the mullet? Handle that, Gary. How's that for yeah, populated revenue? Yeah. Eh? A little stinky. I'm, I, I think the Coyotes, are, they're going to be right there till the end. Yeah, I hope like they get it's in. It's a game seven in the arena. Ball. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. I mean, any game there is just money coming out of the owner's pockets and the players more importantly. So as, I, I just, I love watching them play. Last night, little statement game against the Kings. They lost 2 nothing. Kings are good. But I, I like to, I like to deal with my man. Uh, get this guy a beer. Listen, Connor Bedard, uh, I've been hard on him more than anybody. I think I might be the only one that's been hard on him. He's proven me wrong. But the other night against the Lightning, his, butt, his teammate gets hit from behind. He's the first guy there. Boom, he goes in the pile. Just grabs him. Obviously, Connor Bedard's not going to fight. Just grabs him. Gets in there. The rest of his teammates come in. 
Connor, that's all you have to do as a superstar, buddy. Just get in there and grab a guy. Your teammates will be in there. Felino will be right behind you, having your back. Uh, I don't even know if Connor Bernard drinks. He's not old enough. But get this guy, a Labatt Blue, up dog. I love seeing a young guy get in there. That makes me a little check in O'Brien's book for Bernard. I love that he got in there. Connor, if you're listening to this, bud, this is the only way you get back in O'Brien's book. You just get <laughs> Just scruff it up a little bit, bud. Grab a guy, put him in a headlock, wrestle him down to the ice, throw a punch or two, and you're going to be Obi's new favorite guy. In fact, then he might bet you to win the Calder and take my bottle of wine back. Yeah, that's all you got to do. Just grab a guy. Don't have to fight. Just grab a guy. So, Connor, good on you. Good on you. Good on Luke Richardson and Nick Foligno and Corey Perry. I got to think that has to do with coaching and leadership. That you guys, man. guys that the kids. They know. He sees Corey Perry go into every scrum. He's like, I better get in there. Perry's mad at me. So, it's great. Uh, We got a new goal leader in the NHL. I got Miko Rantanen to win the Rocket Richard. Come on, Miko, keep shooting it, buddy. Well, this guy ain't going anywhere. Kyle Connor, maybe I'm going to say the worst style of anyone to ever lead the league in scoring. 14 goals. Got terrible style though. Terrible, yeah, terrible yeah, style. Yeah, I'm trying to think of of pure goal scorers that have had terrible that have style. It up and hit. I don't know. He is efficient, man. He shoots the puck uh, quicker, and it it the release is pretty special. And see, he's been scoring goals, Obi, like this since he's been in the league. Yeah. He's, he's like greasy he's 30 with his eyes closed. Yeah. You know, I'm sh- sure 40, he's going to be pushing 50 goals this year. I mean, get this guy a cold. He deserves one up in Winnipeg. Get him a Labatt Blue. And last but not least, up dog, get this guy a beer. Who you got? Jonathan Huberdo. You got him going, fella. Snapped out of his drought, scored when we put him on the milk carton, fella. Four points in the last three games since this episode of him showing up on the side carton of the 2% Lister belt. That was uh, great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, All right. Nice to see him back. Sometimes you got to give a little tough love. Hey, you we love you. Yeah. Just shooting the puck. See? It looks better. Maybe it happens to the line this week. Big win for them last night against your Kraken. Yeah, it was. Big it old was. win. Yeah, I'm coming, coming from behind, baby. Listen, there's no secret to why this team's rolling too as much as I love Wings, baby. Wings, baby. Anderson, man. Yeah, he's he good. He got suspended for that hit on Liney. By the way, people in Columbus, are you still choked about the hit to Liney? Right? Huh? Yeah. It's a healthy scratch now. You're all over me. Oh, you're going to Look at now your best players in the press box. But anyways, this Anderson's a stud, man. As the, he goes as the flames go, man. He's nasty. He's nasty. So uh, no surprise there. But get these guys a beer. Good on you, fellas. Last but not least, National Leaguers. Actually, you know what? I got to give some love to my boy, Matty Kachuk. Get this guy a beer. I know he likes his beers. He had a purple suit walking in the other night playing against the Edmonton Oilers. Chucky, whoever your tailor is, keep it up, fella. Wow. Wow, is it nice? nice? Yeah. Oh, purple. Good one at the awards, too. It was nice. Get wow. Chucky an ice cold Labatt Blue like for that deep suit. Purple, like it's just, electric purple. It's like a lavender. Wow. Like a lavender. Pinstripes. And no, oh, just nice white, little simple tie. Tight. And less is more. Just nice. Just nice. Did you see William Nylander over in Sweden with his baggy suit on that one time? I did. I mean, those guys in the Leafs, their fashion is probably above my payroll, him and Matthews, but I, I, I didn't love it. You know what? And I have to throw this on the milk carton. I'm throwing it back there. Oh, you're going back. Is uh, the William Neal, like he, he went on this TV show over in Sweden with yeah. this like with this older lady. He was more up. I couldn't tell what was going on, but she was touching him and he had the white wife beater, like the yeah. white, you we, know. She, what, she, she didn't see the guy that close. Are we allowed to say wife beater on TV on this? Or no? uh, it's called the tank top. Is it called the tank? Yeah, okay, tanker. called the tank top. But um, it was just weird, and like I didn't. Uh, she was she was all horned up. Yeah, but like it wasn't perfect. Like you know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. would have been different. There's a lot of good looking Swedes over there. Yeah. Different TV show, baby. We we'll put them on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, she was just an old coog that I was looking for. She was like, whoa, wow. She was taking advantage of uh, you know, yeah, like, paws on him. It was just an odd choice of attire for him to wear on television. I thought. He went with the Pat McAfee look, didn't he? It was even a little skinnier than Pat McAfee. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, it was the low V. It was obviously working. The the, the girl liked it, the old Coog like. I'm sure he did well over there. I'm sure he was seeing the ball well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're finishing up right here. National Leaguers. Um, listen, welcome back, boys. Your buddy, Aaron Eckblad, back to the lineup. And my boy, Monty Kid Fella, made the returns against the Ducks the other night. Uh, watched them play last night against the Edmonton Oilers. Second game back. Yep. But listen, what I'm saying here is welcome back, boys. We missed you. And the Florida Panthers that I took at the start of the year to get back to the Stanley Cup Finals, 25 points, 12-5-1. and one. Look out, man. Yeah. Look Great pick. out, man. They are healthy yeah. again. That's 2,500. Yeah, something like that. They are healthy again. Uh, Bennett's back, of course. Now they got their two studs back on the back end. Oliver Ekman-Larsen has five goals. When they signed him, I thought, eh, 
Matt, vitamin vitamin D. Totally. Vitamin D. When you get older. Unbelievable. When you get older, you need that little vitamin D. I'm going like out, better when you come out of sunshine. I'm going to Florida in the new year. I don't know when, but I'm going to check the schedule. I'm yeah. going. I'm staying in Miami too, I think. But um, congrats. Good to see those boys back. Panthers fans, they're in a perfect spot up either. They're way better than I thought they were going to be at this point at American Thanksgiving. Yeah, so, yeah well done. Uh, Maxi, thank you for coming in here today. I know you got a big uh, big week ahead of you here at uh, with Thanksgiving. Updog, thank, happy Thanksgiving to your beautiful family. Tell Big Scott I said what's up. Will do, fella. For all the single guys out there, Super Wednesday. Pick up the slack for the boys because, unfortunately, we're retired. And be that was, safe. That was missing curfew. Don't uh, even be safe. Just get in one. Dallas. Dallas. <laughs>